In the previous video tutorial, we carried out various calculations for reciprocating compressors. We calculated volumetric efficiency, polytropic work, isothermal work and isothermal efficiency. In this tutorial, we're going to return to our calculations of volumetric efficiency and we're going to look at some alternative ways of determining that parameter. So on the screen here, we have the calculation or the formula that was used in order to determine our volumetric efficiency. And we use the values for pressures and volumes as shown on the left hand side. We found using that method or that formula that our volumetric efficiency came out to be 40.6%. However, there is an alternative way to determine volumetric efficiency. And the alternative formula that can be used is induced volume. We'll write that as V in divided by swept volume. Let's take a look at our pressure volume diagram to see how this relates to V1, V2, V3 and V4 for our cycle. So as we refer to our diagram then, we can see that our induced volume is represented by the distance between position 4 and position 1. Therefore our induced volume can be rewritten as V1 minus V4. This distance here is our induced volume. So V in then is V1 minus V4. Our swept volume then relates to position 1 and position 3. So this time we can see by tracking down that our swept volume is V1 minus V3 because it's the distance between position 3 and position 1. So we can write V1 minus V3. What we can also see from our diagram is that our volume at position 3, or V3, is going to be the same as our clearance volume here. So where we have our clearance volume written on the left hand side as V subscript CL, we have a value of 0.25 decimeters cubed, but we know that that's the same as the volume at position 3. So let's make a note, volume at position 3. And what we can also see is that our volume at position 1 here is our swept volume, which equates to this distance here, plus our clearance volume, which equates to this distance here. So let's make a note in the bottom left hand corner, V1 is our clearance volume, plus our swept volume. The other things that we know from our diagram is moving from position 1 to position 2, we have a polytropic compression, and moving from positions 3 to 4, we have a polytropic expansion. But our calculation for volumetric efficiency here doesn't include V2. So all we need to do then is determine V4, and then we can use the new formula to determine our volumetric efficiency. So let's create some space by removing our PV diagram. And now we can note some of our volume values. We've already said that V3 is our clearance volume. Our clearance volume is 0.25 decimeters cubed, but we need to divide that by a thousand to get that into meters cubed. We explained the reasoning behind that in the previous video. So our V3 value then is 0 0.00025 meters cubed. We've also said that we know what V1 is. We know that V1 is our clearance volume, 0.25, plus our swept volume, 2.65. That would give us a value in decimeters cubed. So we need to divide that by a thousand to get our meters cubed, giving us 0 0.0029. So we have a value for V3 and we have a value for V1. The only remaining volume we need to find is V4. Now we know that moving from position 3 to position 4 is a polytropic expansion. So the equation that connects pressures and volumes when we have a polytropic expansion is as follows. P3, V3 to the N equals P4, V4 to the N. Now we're looking to find a V4. So the first thing that we need to do is divide each side by P4 and we'll get V4 to the N 
equals P3, P3 to the M, divided by P4. Now the inverse of raising something to the power N is to raise it by the power of 1 over N. You may recall from earlier tutorials that the equivalent power for square root is a half, and the equivalent power for cube root is a third. It therefore follows that the equivalent power for the nth root is 1 over n. So looking at what we have there, in order to get v4 on its own, we need to raise to the power of 1 over n. So therefore, we can say v4 equals p3, p3 to the n, all over p4, raised to the power of 1 over n. Now because we have a ratio here, p3 over p4, we can actually work in bar. We could convert our two pressures there into pascals, but we would arrive at the same answer. However, we do need to use a v3 in meters cubed. So what we can write then is as follows, v4 equals p3. Well, we know that p3 is our higher pressure, and it's the same as our delivery pressure, 10.75 times V3 to the N, well V3 is 0 0.00025 and N is 1.19 all divided by P4, well P4 is the same as P1, it's our inlet pressure so we have 1.01 .01. and the power on the outside there is 1 over 1.19 Running that all through the calculator gives us a V4 value equal to 0 0.001824 meters cubed. And that's accurate to six decimal places there. So finally then, we can calculate our volumetric efficiency. Our volumetric efficiency, returning to the original calculation, is V1. 0.0029 minus V4 0.001824 all divided by V1 0.0029 once again minus V3 and V3 is 0 0.00025. Running that all through the calculator then gives us a volumetric efficiency equal to 0 0.4060 or 40.6%. So as we would expect, Using either method gives us the same volumetric efficiency of 40.6%. Now there is one other thing that we can do to prove that both of these formulas or both of these methods are the same, and that's to do a derivation of the original formula up at the top, shown in black, and we're going to derive that using the second formula, which relates our induced volume to our swept volume. So I'm going to leave the original formula at the top, but I'm going to use the second formula in order to derive that original formula. Okay, before beginning our derivation, it's important to clarify what we mean by the term C. C is our clearance ratio, and in the bottom left-hand corner, we said the clearance ratio was the ratio of the clearance volume to the swept volume. Well, we also said previously that our clearance volume was just V3, and our swept volume was V1 minus V3. So the way that we're going to carry out this derivation is by replacing V1 on the top of our fraction here by a term involving V3 in the clearance ratio. And we're also going to replace V4, much like we did before, in terms of P3, V3 and P4 because we know the process moving from position three to four is polytropic. So let's look at how we would go about replacing V1 first of all. Well, we know that the clearance ratio equals V3 
over v1 minus v3. Multiplying each side then by v1 minus v3 gives us c. v1 minus v3 equals v3. Then dividing each side by c gives us v1 minus v3 equals v3 over c. And finally, adding v3 onto each side just gives us v1, v3 over c plus v3. So now we have v1 expressed in terms of v3 and the clearance ratio. Next then, let's take a look at v4. We know that p3, v3 to the n, equals p4, v4 to the n. So we can divide each side by p4, and we get v4 to the n, equals p3, v3 to the n, over p4. And as before, we can take the nth root of each side, or taking the nth root is the same as raising the power to 1 over n. So now we have v4 equals p3, v3 to the n over p4 all to the 1 over n. Well, if we were to refer to our indicator diagram, we know that p3 is our higher pressure, and we know that p4 is our lower pressure. So in actual fact then, p3, the higher pressure, over p4, the lower pressure, is the same as our compression ratio, r subscript p. So I'm going to rewrite this as follows. v4, p3, over p4, to the 1 over n. Now by separating it out in that way, that's going to be multiplied by v3 to the n, all raised to the 1 over n. Well, v3 to the n, all raised to the 1 over n, is the same as raising it to the power of n, and then taking the nth root. Those two operations are actually going to cancel each other out. So instead we can write v4 equals a v3, p3 over p4 is our volumetric compression ratio, so r subscript p, and by doing that, it's only the r subscript p that's raised to the 1 over n. So let's make a note of our new v1 term involving v3 in the clearance ratio, and our new v4 term involving v3 and the compression ratio, and then we can complete our derivation. Okay, so if we pick up where we left off, we set our volumetric efficiency v1 minus v4, all over v1 minus v3. But we can actually rewrite that, because we can separate this out into two fractions. The first fraction is going to be v1 over v1 minus v3. And the second fraction is going to be v4 over v1 minus v3. Note that we've retained the negative or the minus in between those two terms. So moving on then, because we have different terms for v1 and v4, we can substitute v1 in to this term here, and we can substitute v4 into this term here. That gives us the following. Volumetric efficiency equals, instead of v1, we have v3 over c plus v3. Now in the same way, we can separate that into two fractions, where both fractions are going to have the denominator v1 minus v3. We can write this as follows. v3 over c, v1 minus v3, plus v3 over v1 minus v3. This term here becomes this term here, and the v3 term becomes this term here. So next we have v4 over v1 minus v3. Now the first thing to note is that we are subtracting this term. So we have subtract. In the place of v4, we have v3, r subscript p to the 1 over n, divided by v1 minus v3. 
And now we can start making some substitutions. Because if you recall, we stated that our clearance ratio was V3 over V1 minus V3. And as we look at each of these terms, we can see that our first term has V3 over V1 minus V3. Our second term has V3 over V1 minus V3. And our third term has V3, V1 minus V3. So where I'm making them substitutions then, I'm going to make a note in blue. So we have equals C, but in this first term, we also have a C on the bottom. Our second term then, we have V3 over V1 minus V3. So that term there just reduces to C. And our final term is minus. We have our substitution for C, but notice we still have our compression ratio to the power of 1 over n. Reducing this down then, c over c just equals 1. So we have 1 plus c minus c to the rp, 1 over n. And finally, let's just reorder this slightly. So we have 1 minus c r subscript p to the 1 over n plus c. Now if we want to factorise this section here, or these two terms here, then we could divide each of those by minus c. So we can take minus c outside the brackets, and what will we be left with? Well, we'll be left with 1 minus c outside the brackets. If we take the c outside the brackets for this first term here, then we're going to get r subscript p to the 1 over n. And if we divide by minus c here, what we're going to be left with is minus 1, like so. So our volumetric efficiency then, through derivation, becomes 1 minus c, open brackets, r subscript p to the 1 over n minus 1. Now what you'll notice is the formula at the bottom there is identical to the formula at the top. Now although this is quite an involved process, what we can do is take one or other formula for volumetric efficiency, and through a process of derivation, we can prove that one formula is equivalent to the other. Therefore proving that either of these methods can be used in order to calculate the volumetric efficiency for a reciprocating compressor.